This is part one of a three-part series on basic T6 formation procedures. This video covers formation admin to include general philosophy, individual responsibilities, call sign usage, visual signals, training rules, and knock it off, terminate, breakout, and lost sight procedures. Part two covers formation flight concepts, and part three is a look at individual maneuvers. The majority of military flying missions incorporate formation flying of some type, whether that be for mutual support or aerial refueling purposes. In phase two of pilot training, we introduce two ship basic formation concepts to build confidence, teamwork, self-discipline, and proper application of aggressiveness to military flying. The principal consideration in formation flight is flight discipline. Per the 11248, uncompromising flight discipline is vital for successful mission execution. It requires an in-depth knowledge of flight rules, unit standards, and procedures presented in the 11248. Flight discipline also means flying in the proper parameters for the formation position directed by the flight lead with zero tolerance for remaining out of position. Aggressiveness in formation flying is a state of mind, an attitude not to be confused with the speed of flight control movement. As number one, thinking ahead of the aircraft and profile while anticipating the need for changes and adjustments before they actually occur is an indication of proper aggressive attitude as lead aircraft. As number two, correcting for positional deviations while mentally anticipating the next phase of flight or maneuver indicates proper aggressiveness. A smooth and timely response to lead's directives demonstrates the proper aggressive attitude for number two. The flight lead is ultimately responsible for the safe and effective conduct of the mission. The flight lead is identified prior to the sortie and is not necessarily the number one aircraft. Number one's top priorities include clearing for the formation, planning, and monitoring number two. Plan all maneuvers to keep the flight well within the assigned working airspace. High performance and high G maneuvers require smooth and deliberate control inputs to keep number two from exceeding G limitations. Monitor two to ensure they are in the correct position before starting the next maneuver. Before directing a maneuver, always consider two's position and ability to safely perform such a maneuver. Execute each maneuver smoothly, allowing number two to maintain position without undue difficulty. Number two's primary responsibility is to maintain flight path deconfliction and proper position as directed by number one. This includes providing mutual support and maintaining formation integrity by executing the plan as briefed and accomplishing the tasks as directed by number one without compromising safety. Number two's top priorities include flight path deconfliction, maintaining proper position, being on frequency, and executing additional tasks as directed by lead. During the pre-flight briefing, the designated flight lead will be given the call sign that ends in one, and the other flight member will be given the call sign that ends in two. When single ship, the flight lead uses the lead call sign. For example, if the formation is Yogi 31 and Yogi 32, flight lead uses the Yogi 31 call sign. If using a local single ship call sign, such as Kermit 33, single ship flight lead is Kermit 33-1 and the other aircraft is Kermit 33-2. All radio calls to an agency outside the formation should begin with the full call sign. For example, Hey Van's arrival, Yogi 31, level 5000 feet. When directing other members of the flight, it is common to use the call sign prefix and single digit suffix of their position in the flight. For example, Yogi 2 break up. When immediately responding to an in-flight directive, number two may simply use two to acknowledge lead. Visual signals are used when radio transmissions are inappropriate or difficult to make. Visual signals are described in AFI 11-205 and AFMAN 11-248. When lead passes a visual signal to number two, two should acknowledge with a head nod or by moving to the new formation position. For example, if lead gives the echelon turn signal, two will head nod. If lead gives a cross under or close trail signal, two should maneuver to the new position without doing a head nod or radio acknowledgement. If unsure of a signal, two should not acknowledge or change position. Lead repeats the signal until an acknowledgement is received. Use the radio if necessary to immediately clear up any confusion. Visual signals must be clear, appropriate, and proportional to two's range from lead.
For example, lead should use a small wing rock to direct two to move from root to fingertip. Use a large wing rock to signal two to rejoin or reform when two is 500 feet or more away. Clear, concise, correct communications are a good indicator of flight discipline. Minimize and combine radio calls on common use frequencies to reduce radio congestion. To minimize unnecessary radio transmissions, lead should use visual signals to the maximum extent possible. Unless otherwise briefed or directed, when communicating with agencies outside the formation, number one will speak for the flight until the formation splits up. Number one owns the radios, which means number two will only change frequencies when directed by one. If number one uses the term go for a frequency change, number two will acknowledge before changing the frequency. Yogi 31 flight, turn left next taxiway, contact ground point niner went off. Yogi 31 Wilco, go one two one decimal niner. Two. Check in your wingman on the new frequency, then make your radio call. Yogi 31 check. Two. Jelly stone ground, Yogi 31 flight, clear of the runway, request taxi to Boo Boo's FBO. If number one uses the term push, number two should change to the new frequency without acknowledging. Yogi 31, push 121 decimal niner. Yogi 31, check. Two. When in fingertip, two should automatically move to the root position when number one directs a channel change. Two should auto return to fingertip after being checked in on the new frequency. If in IMC, two will maintain fingertip spacing and use the crew concept to accomplish frequency changes. If two is solo in IMC, change the frequency when workload permits. Wait until VMC if necessary and use the discrete frequency to communicate within the formation. Creep two, go channel six. Two. Creep zero one check. Two. Advanced departure creep zero one east side passing 2700 east low. Creep zero one, advanced departure right in. Creep zero one, contact advanced route with 117. Creep zero one, push 17. Bandy tree one, radar contact three miles south. Creep zero one, check. Two. Advanced arrival creep zero one, uh, 5000. Formation training rules are found in the 11-2-T-6 Vol 3 and in-flight guide. Some of the safety of flight rules unique to formation flight include knock it off, terminate, break out, blind, and lost wingman procedures. Knock it off will be called when safety of flight is a factor or where doubt or confusion exists. There are about a dozen situations that warrant executing knock it off procedures. Knock it off actions are CCMA clear and avoid any hazards in your flight path, cease maneuvering, maintain visual of the other aircraft, and acknowledge the radio call. Any aircraft in the formation can call a knock it off. The lead aircraft will remain predictable and limit maneuvering to non-aggressive bank and pitch angles, similar to how you should fly when in IMC. Once called, aircraft acknowledge the knock it off call in order, and then the aircraft that initiated the radio call states the reason. Here are two examples of the radio procedures. Lead will call the first knock it off, two will initiate the second one. Yogi knock it off. Yogi one knock it off. Yogi two knock it off. My picnic basket came unstowed. Yogi knock it off. Yogi one knock it off. Yogi two knock it off. I'm choking on a fly. A terminate is called when safety of flight is not a factor. A terminate can be called by either aircraft when bingo fuel is reached, training objectives are met for that maneuver, or when two is out of position. Early in formation training, a terminate will most often be called by two when they fall out of position during wing work, close trail, or extended trail. 
Terminating a maneuver when out of position is the equivalent of executing a go-around following an unstable approach. Calling a terminate when out of position prevents a possible safety of flight issue from developing. This is especially true during wing work if two gets stripped on the outside of the turn. In this scenario, if lead isn't monitoring two and reverses their turn direction, once on the inside of the turn, two may quickly develop a high closure rate with a vector towards lead. So, to prevent the mid-air collision, two should call terminate when out of position and lead will cease their aggressive maneuvering. Yogi, terminate. Yogi one, terminate. Yogi two, terminate, out of position. The purpose of a breakout is to ensure immediate separation of the aircraft to avoid a mid-air collision. There are four scenarios in which two will break out. Lead or wing may initiate a breakout. When breaking out, the wingman clears in the direction of the break and maneuvers away from lead's last known position or in the direction that ensures immediate separation. Use power and speed brake as required to maintain safe maneuvering airspeed to expedite the separation. When able, the wingman informs lead they are breaking out. During a breakout, lead continues to fly predictably and if the wingman is in sight, maneuvers to maintain sight and deconflict flight paths. If S2 you break yourself out, maintain visual fleet available and auto rejoin once your aircraft is stable with adequate spacing from lead. If lead directs 2 to break out while wings level or on the outside of a turn, lead will direct 2 to roll out when safe separation is achieved. If lead directs a breakout with 2 on the inside of the turn, 2 should reduce power to achieve separation. If breaking out on the inside of the turn, do not increase your bank angle and add power the way you would while wings level. On the inside of the turn, increasing your bank angle would cause you to fly in front of lead's 3-9 line, and adding power would cause you to move closer to lead. In any of these scenarios, if 2 is visual with lead, they may roll out regardless of who initiates the breakout. If number 2 is belly up and therefore not visual with 1, 1 will direct 2 to roll out once safe separation is established. Lead then directs 2 to rejoin. Here are two breakout videos. The first is directed by lead, the second is self-initiated by 2. Yogi 2, break out. Yogi 2 is breaking out. Yogi 2, roll out. Yogi 2 is visual. Yogi 2 is breaking out. Although numbers 1 and 2 are both responsible for adequate separation, generally number 2 has primary responsibility for flight path deconfliction within the element unless number 2 is unable to maintain visual. Although not number 1's primary responsibility when number 2 is visual, number 1 is still expected to monitor number 2. Periodic cross-check of number 2's position will ensure that number 1 does not execute a maneuver that will compromise safety should 2 be out of position. If number one loses sight and is uncertain of number two's position, query two by transmitting pause it over the radio. Two must then respond with their position relative to lead. Yogi two, pause it. Yogi two, five o'clock, low, 500 feet. There are two basic scenarios in which two may lose sight of lead, in visual or instrument meteorological conditions. In VMC, two is blind. In IMC, two is lost wingman. If number 2 loses sight of lead in VMC, 2 must transmit blind with their altitude. Lead should then take a second or two to look for 2 at their last known position. If after 2 seconds lead does not see 2, lead must also call blind with altitude and then immediately be directive to get a minimum of 1000 feet altitude separation between the aircraft without causing the aircraft to cross altitudes. Once a thousand feet of altitude separation is established, lead must be directive to re-establish visual and rejoin the formation once visual contact is made by two. To re-establish visual contact, lead must direct two to orbit at a specific location, altitude, and turn direction. The location should be a specific radial and DME from a nav aid or in a specific location in the MOA if that's where two lost visual of lead. As a technique, lead should orbit the opposite direction of two to maximize the opportunity for one of the aircraft to get visual with the other. The task may be turned on by two to assist in regaining visual of one. 
Once two is visual, lead aircraft will direct two to rejoin. Here's an example of blind procedures. Yogi 2 is blind, 9,000 feet. Roger. Yogi 1 is blind, 8,500 feet. Yogi 2, climb and maintain 9,500 feet. Report 1 established. 2. Yogi 2 is blind, 9,500 feet. Yogi 1, blind 8,500 feet. Yogi 2, fly to the northeast corner of the MOA. Make left hand orbits at 9,500 feet. 2. Yogi 1 will make right hand orbits in the northeast corner at 8,500 feet. 2. Yogi 2 is visual. If number two loses sight of lead aircraft in IMC, two must execute lost wingman procedures as described in the 11248. There are five lost wingman scenarios. While en route wings level, inside the turn, outside of the turn, while descending on an instrument approach from the final approach fix to minimums, and while executing an instrument missed approach. If two says they are lost wingman, lead will reply with their attitude as a minimum. Two will acknowledge and execute the appropriate procedure. Here's an example of the formation practicing lost wingman procedures with two on the inside of the turn. Yogi two, go practice lost wingman. Two. Yogi one, roll out. Yogi two is lost wingman. Yogi one, is wings level? Two. Yogi two is visual. That completes this lesson on formation admin topics. In part two, we look at basic formation positions and concepts.